Next question is for Dr. George. Ken's got the microphone up front here. First gentleman uh, who had his hand up right there holding up the uh, tablet, please. I can't stand. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're welcome to sit. Thank you. Dr. George, I had an opportunity to listen to you on Monday. And one of the questions that was thrown at you was, what are you going to do about Metro Detroit? And your answer was, we're going to give them tools. Who the hell is going to pay for these tools? <laughs> Let me uh, correct the record a little bit. No. The I rode my bike. Yep, I said that. I'll tell you what it means. I rode my bicycle 700 miles last year all around Michigan. I spent a day riding through Detroit. I rode 40 miles. I know many of you pass through there from time to time. I recommend you get off the expressway and drive around the neighborhoods. A, thir a third of it is vacant space. They have 70,000 tax reverted properties. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. In fact, it was the cover of Time Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> October 5th, 2009, a falling down Detroit. This is the image of Michigan. This is what people think on the outside, that this is Michigan, and we need to fix it. And we can give local governments the tools to turn vacant space into urban agriculture. What am I talking about? I'm talking about changing the law to allow downtown development authorities, other de authorities and cities to take out infrastructure. Right now, the law is designed to build things up, to put in shopping malls, to put in condos. A million people aren't moving back. The law needs to be redesigned so they can take things out. If you want to have farming on vacant space in Detroit, you need to take out gas lines. You need to take out curbing. So the law needs to be changed to give local officials the tools. In Flint, where I'm from originally, Flint, Michigan, born and raised, they have a land bank. They've made some progress, but you may know in Detroit there are two land banks and they're fighting. Wayne County has one, Detroit has one. They don't get along. It doesn't work well. How much progress have they made? I don't know. There's 3,000 more tax reverted properties going on the rolls this quarter. So the law needs to be changed to give them the tools, not your money. Give them the tools to facilitate urban agriculture. It's the best immediate use for vacant space. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Next up, question for Congressman Hoekstra. Take it right back there, Dave. That's fine. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hoekstra. I agree with most of the things you have said and done. The one thing which I have a question about is regarding the TARP and the bailout. I assume you voted for it. Is that correct? And can you explain to me why? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I did vote for TARP. Yes. All right. You know, every day I'm in Washington, I face lots, not every day. Some days you face some really tough votes. That day, we were taking a look at, you know, is the financial system going to collapse or isn't it based on what we do? Uh, people all across the country, leadership, Republican, Democrats, many of my, uh, most of my folks back home, the small business people whose capital was drying up, the banks who were losing the ability to loan, said, if we don't pass something to help the financial institutions, it collapses, the Dow loses another 3,000 points, it needed to be done. It has now, you know, parts of it have worked, parts of it have not. All right, thank you. Uh, question for the entire panel now. Let's uh, come back over here, Ken. Go with, uh, go with this gentleman right there. He seems really, this has got to be a great question. Because he's done some calisthenics to get our attention. All right, take it away, pal. Uh, can I tell you, as you all know, Michigan was the first place in the Western world to get the death penalty. I don't know if you become governor, if you will pass death penalty law and bring it back to Michigan because we need it. I, um, when I was in the Senate, I introduced twice a resolution to allow you the people, we the people, seems to be a thing they ignore, I introduced a resolution twice to allow you to vote on the death penalty. I believe we ought to have it, but you ought to at least have a right to decide it. They won't give it to you. I think it's overdue. I would support it. I have supported it. I will support it. Some of these people don't deserve to continue getting three squares a day after what they've done to kids and women and people I've seen in my job.
Well, you should know this measure is in the state constitution. It's not something a governor can change, or even the legislature alone. It would have to go up for a vote of the people. But just so you know my personal feeling, I'm not comfortable giving the government the ability to execute people. I don't really trust the government that much. So I'm not a big fan. The, um, I've got a 100% voting record pro-life for 18 years. I've never missed a pro-life vote. And got voted right, voted right every time. <laughs> Dr. Georges is absolutely right. If you want the death penalty, it's your option to get that on the ballot and to have the vote. I personally, you know, I have not supported the death penalty. As we've, want, as we've gone through the process, and as you now watch how the death penalty works, you know, as World War II, we had people come across you know, Germans land in New England, convicted and executed, I think in a matter of months. You now take a look at how the death penalty works. The people that are being executed today were convicted when my kids were born. It's no longer in that process because what the courts have done it is, not, it is not an effective deterrent to crime. All right, next question will be for Sheriff Bouchard. For Sheriff Bouchard, uh, stay right back there, that uh, lady in the, in the back row, Dave. Thank you. Um, will you disband the MECC? Would you disband the whole business uh, um, that was instigated by Engler, but it has now almost a, Recently, a $7 million um, grant was almost given to a felon. And I'm just wondering, are you going to disband the whole thing or? The MEDC, -E right? Mm -hmm. okay. Right, the MEDC. You, you mentioned M MBT, which is a tax, which I oppose and is stupid. But the MEDC came from MEGA, -E which was mega, which I voted against when it was created. Because as I said at the beginning, this isn't about Republican or Democrat. This is this is strong standing on beliefs and you know at the time when Governor Engler was the governor and I was a leader as a Republican trust me I got my shins kicked pretty hard to vote for that but I thought it was wrong then and it's now been borne out we now abate more taxes than we collect we now only have a third of the jobs promised and it's very simple to see the math it doesn't work you know Orion plant was saved through this and I'm glad they're there it's in my county it's great 1400 jobs but it's not sustainable, it doesn't work, and it punishes small business. Eight out of 10 jobs created and growing will be small. And when the governor said it's a banner day, we saved 1,400 jobs, it ignores the math. On the same day, we lost 3,200 jobs from the same area, and it cost us a billion dollars in subsidies to keep the 1,400. What other business in here would say, we just lost two-thirds of our business and spent a billion dollars, let's pop the champagne. It's broken. Would I, would I get rid of it? Yeah, I didn't vote for it when it started. All right, next question is for uh, Dr. George. Ken, you've got the, uh, the mic. Can you make it over, you make it over there? Uh, you know what? Get that gentleman right there. It just had his hand in. There we go. Hello. Um, this question is, um, considering that the, uh, the U.S legislator is going to pass this year a cap and trade, which we call cap and tax, which is going to be one of the most insidious uh, forms of le uh, legislation based on junk science. What will you do to fight this anti-business, anti-citizen tax, which is going to just redistribute our money to some poor countries around the world and it's not going to do anything for energy independence? This actually is a question for all this, uh, the panel out there. Well, uh, it'll be a question for Dr. George here. And, Sorry, as, as governor, I would not have a vote on that. As a state legislator, I don't. How, and, however, I, I oppose it. But let me tell you something that's related that you need to know about. Governor Granholm did her own version a couple years ago. Have you noticed your residential utility rates are going up? That's because she put in place a renewable energy portfolio standard. It says it's good for you to buy alternative energy, even though it costs four times as much, and you have to. 